Hello there. So today we're going to learn how to build a feed-forward neural network from scratch in uh, Python. And uh, also build a simple GUI, a graphical user interface in PyQt, this one over here, to uh, make it as clear as possible what is going on in each step and uh, play around with it. So this is a school project for a course in AI. Uh, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how a feed-forward uh, neural network works using this GUI. And uh, following that comes the videos about how I actually built this program. And uh, they're quite raw and uh, unedited and um, like three hours long in total and uh, 800 uh, lines of code. So yeah, it really takes a while. But if you want to see how a uh, program like this is built in uh, Python and PyQt, uh, you should definitely watch those. If you want to make changes to this program, you can just uh, download the file from GitHub. It's in the comment section. So how does this work? In this case, we have an input layer with two neurons and one bias neuron, a hidden layer with four neurons and one bias neuron, and an output layer with one neuron. But of course, there are all kinds of configuration of this, and uh, figuring out how many hidden neurons you should use is actually tricky, and you really have to try um, different numbers to see what works best. So, uh, in this example, we're going to try to solve the XOR gate, which is like the whole world for neural networks. And it's commonly used to see that the uh, neural network is doing what it's supposed to do. So when we're done with, with training the neural network, it should be able to just look at the input data here on the left-hand side and um, figure out what the out should, output should be here on the right-hand right, right -hand side. Uh, so we load the first two um, inputs, or the first row here, this one. Uh, so we get two inputs, input one and input two, and the expected value over here. And in the input layer, we don't do anything with the data. We just uh, use the same uh, data for the outputs here. And then we have the synapses over here. And they contain weights, which we can see on the buttons here. And they are randomly initialized to, uh, in this case, between minus 2 and 2. And then we have the delta weights, which uh, are shown up here when I press one of these buttons. And that is like how the weights should change to improve performance, to come as close to the expected value as possible. So basically, we're going to run through all this data many, many times and then change the weight values continuously to, to try and come as close to the expected value as possible. So the first step here is to forward propagate. And say, say that, no, that we're going to forward propagate to this value here, we're going to take this weight here and we're going to multiply with this value here, and then we're going to add all this to this weight here times this one, and add that to this one times this one. So the values here are like the weighted sums of, uh, of the previous uh, step here. And, and now we're not just going to use the same inputs as the output here. We're going to run, run these inputs through the transfer function. And uh, uh, you can think many hours about the transfer function. But one way of looking at it is that you, we now we, we have now split up the problem in like four different parts. Um, all, all these four neurons are now representing um, um, a piece of the data, and they're not really necessarily related now. And we need to like run them through a common transfer function to get them on the same track, so that we can use this like new model over here to. Um, yeah, continue with our forward propagation. Uh, so we do that uh, over here, like the, the exact same way as before. So um, we take this one times this one plus this one times this one, so on. So we get uh, an input here. And then we run this input through the transfer function just as before. So now we can see that the output that we got from this uh, first forward propagation is, is not the same as the expected value. An error here. And uh, that we can get now. And that's the delta here, this one minus this one. Uh, and we're going to use this delta for two things. Uh, so the first thing is to learn and um, to update the, the weight values. And that's what this delta gradient is for. And the, and the second thing is to know when to stop learning. And that's what these, these two values are used for. So the MSC stands for mean squared error. And it's basically a, like a cleaned up version of this delta. Uh, the first one here is uh, this pattern MSC mean squared error, and it's basically this one squared divided by two. And pattern stands for uh, one data row basically, so it's it's this pattern, and it has received its MSC now. 
and batch MSC is um, like the MSC of all the all the data here. So one batch is all this data, and each of these data rows will get an MSC. And in order to calculate the batch MSC, we take all these MSCs and take the average of those. So that will update once we've finished running through all the data. So the second thing we're going to use the delta here for is to learn from our errors and uh, get an indication of how we should update the weights to come closer to the expected value next time. So the delta weights uh, here are, are like the uh, change indication of the uh, delta with regard to the output or the derivative of the um, delta with regard to the output. Uh, so when we uh, forward propagated, we took the inputs here and, and ran them through the transfer function to get the outputs. But now when we're going to back propagate, we're going to take the output and run, run them through the transfer function derivative to get to the other side of the neuron. So whenever we're mo moving from left to right, we use the transfer function and when we're moving from right to left, we use the transfer function derivative. Say now that we want to update the, or calculate the delta weight value for this uh, synapse over here, we're going to take the, the output here and uh, run it through the transfer function derivative and multiply with the delta value here, the big error. So that's, uh, that's going to be the delta gradient value here that I put here. And then we're going to multiply this value with the output. Uh, this one here to, to get this uh, new delta weight value. So the first thing that we can note here is that all these delta weight values are negative and that's because uh, uh, the output of the network was much higher than the expected value so now the network is saying to these synapses that oh you were too high you should decrease so uh, that, that it says to all of them regardless of their sign. The sign doesn't really matter here and another pretty interesting thing to note here is that uh, uh, the delta, delta weight value for this uh, synapse is uh, smaller compared to this one, even though this value is much bigger than this one. Um, and that's because the, the weight values are actually not being used to calculate the delta weight values, which is kind of counterintuitive because you would assume that a big weight should be considered more responsible for the error here, should be, should be punished more for it. But um, that's not how um, the partial derivation works here, and you only look at the values going on like uh, around the, this value to, to calculate the, the derivative. And uh, also here we notice that the batch delta weight value appears here, and this is the average over several delta weights, but now we only run through one pattern, so we only have one delta weight value, and it basically just shows that one. And um, we also have the bias neuron down here, and um, Basically, the bias neuron uh, provides flexibility to the network and helps the other neurons uh, uh, do their job better. And their delta weight values um, update in a slightly different way. So in this case, the delta weight is uh, just uh, this delta gradient value right, uh, straight off. And uh, uh, it, it just doesn't look at the output value. That's, that's basically the difference. So let's try to calculate the delta weight values for these synapses over here now. And it's going to be slightly more tricky than in the previous case because for these synapses over here, the error could only come from one place. But th now the error is like um, split up in uh, four different parts. So we have to count for that when we update the delta weights for these synapses. So say now that we want to do the delta weight for this uh, synapse over here. We can imagine the error having like uh, went through this path here. So uh, we're going to begin by um, calculating the big error here just as we did before. We take the uh, transfer function derivative of the output times the delta to get the delta gradient and then we times that with the weight over here. So we're, we're going up this path here and we're multiplying it with the weight and then we multiply this value with the transfer function derivative of the output over here to end up on, on the other side of this neuron and then finally we, we, out, uh, we multiply with the output over here to get the, the delta weight here. And for the bias neuron it's almost the same, exact same procedure, we just skip the output just as uh, for this bias neuron. So now we're pretty much done with one of these uh, cycles here. And uh, we have an MSC value and a delta weight value for this row now. And the question now arises whether it's better to update the weights now based on what we've learned so far or whether it's better to um, uh, go through more data and keep um, getting delta weight values for 
for all of these rows and they're recalculating the batch delta weight value which is the average of the delta weights and then finally um, getting a uh, like a final batch delta weight value for all the synapses and use that to to um, to update the weight values uh, if we would do that that would be called batch learning so the batches uh, all the data um, and uh, all the data is also called the epoch or, or when we run through all the data that's one epoch uh, but now we're going to do pattern learning and that's uh, what you do when you update the weights after running through each row so we're going to press this button soon and uh, say that we want to update the weight here we're just going to take the delta weight value that we calculated here and uh, we're going to um, add it to the current uh, uh, weight value that we have and we're also going to multiply all this with a uh, learning rate uh, which uh, uh, right now I've set to 1 so it's not going to affect this uh, calculation at all um, and you can also uh, add all uh, all this to um, to extra terms such as the momentum or R prop which can uh, improve performance a lot uh, but uh, I'm not doing that here. I also wanted to point out that just as in the case of the number of hidden neurons, it's hard to know what the learning rate should be, so you really have to try different values for that. Also note the, the small change in the weight here. It was minus 1.5 before, now it's like close to that, so it's going to take a pretty long time for the solution to this uh, problem to emerge. So let's continue on our journey to get there. We'll, we'll load the next uh, data row, the one zero here, for propagate, calculate the error for that one. And the MSC uh, uh, for this one uh, is uh, incidentally close to zero, and that's because the initial weight values just happen to fit really good for, for the, uh, this pattern. And that happens. Uh, so like uh, yeah, it's, now it seems to be like really good for for two of the patterns and really bad for the other two patterns. So now, um, and it might be tricked by that. So it might like get stuck on this now and then not be able to find a solution. But hopefully it will find its way out of this. And now we're done with all the data. We're through. We're through the whole data set. And uh, the epoch counter has uh, gone up to one now. And we can see the batch MSC appear here, so that's the average of all the MSCs. Uh, so let's uh, start from the top again and uh, see if we can get a get an improved batch MSC. So now it's 0 0.217, and now it's 0 0.19. So it's slightly less, but uh, we really can't draw any conclusions for this, and this can fluctuate a lot, uh, especially in the beginning. Like uh, the first 50 or 100 epochs, this can go down by like, yeah, like haywire. So you really have to run through like hundreds of epochs. So let's do that now. We'll press this button and see if we can get it down. So yeah, it's decreased a lot. Let's do one more. So now it's yeah, going down even more. And. Um, um, After about 500 epochs, it's pretty close to zero, it seems. So let's see now what uh, what happens with the data. So 1.1 1, 1 becomes 0 0.17. So yeah, it's pretty close to zero, but still not zero. And let's see uh, what uh, this one becomes. So uh, yeah, it's pretty close to one. And this one is uh, also pretty close to one. And this one is uh, yeah pretty close to zero. Let's try the same thing with batch learning now. Uh, so we'll load a fresh uh, set of random weights, and we'll load inputs for propagate for propagate, calculate errors, back propagate, back propagate, and now we don't uh, update the the weights. We load the next input straight away. So now we have our delta weight value here and when we're going to ca calculate our batch delta weight for the second row here we're going to take the current uh, batch delta weight and add it to the new delta weight that we're going to calculate right now so it's going to be minus 0 0.005 plus 
plus 0 0.038 and the result of that is this one so even though the previous one was negative the net one is positive because uh, this value is much bigger than the previous one uh, so then we continue like this and so on and so on so we can uh, do this 100 times see what happens so uh, yeah it's going down so yeah the, these uh, inputs lead something clo pretty close to zero these ones are close to one and uh, this one is close to one and this one is uh, close to zero